In this tutorial, I'm gonna try and answer the question, can sitting cause lower back pain? Now, in this slide, we're gonna look at the mechanism and uh, sort of what's happening and why, and then in the next slide, we're gonna talk about some ways in which uh, you can about, go about uh, reducing that lower back pain or lower back pain from sitting, and also uh, uh, sort of get you on the journey to overcoming it. Now, as many people know, sitting isn't the best posture for the body to be in for a prolonged period of time, um, which sort of, brings us on to the mechanism, which is starting to understand why. And it's the sustained and constant low load over time. So it's not that there's a high load on the spine, but with a low load over time in this rounded position causes a problem in the lower back. And what I've also included is this image here, which is is not necessarily just the sitting posture, it's the rounded spine as well. So the sitting posture isn't, isn't that effective for one. And then two, even if you are in an active job and you're in this rounded position, like this bricklayer, for a prolonged period of time, this is gonna cause problems as well. So it's not just the sitting posture that's doing it, it's the bent posture of the spine for a long, prolonged period of time. Now, what's this doing to the spine? Well, you've got viscoelastic tissues. Now they slowly deform and creep. And by viscoelastic, we mean muscles, ligaments, tendons, and fascia. Now what's happening to these tissues? Well, they are stretching the ligaments. The joints are becoming more lax. We are moving towards disc injury and we are cre increasing loads on the neural arch. So that's happening when our spine goes into this bent position. So that can be sat down or even bent over like this bricklayer or someone that is bent over, you know, moving, um, uh, unloading a box or, or moving things around on the floor, whatever it might be. Basically being in the bent position is not the most effective position for the spine. And this is what's happening. So it's affecting all the tissues and this is what's happening to them. They're becoming stretched, they're becoming lax, we are uh, moving towards disc injury and we're also loading the neural arches a lot more. Now, what I'm gonna do in the next slide is talk to you a little bit more about um, what's going on when it comes to this posture and then we'll talk about some, uh, some things we can do to start reducing it. Before we get into the bullet points, I just want to bring your eyes over to this graph here. Now, obviously, as you can see, we've got time along the bottom, so let's just say we've got zero minutes and then we've got 60 minutes. Now this isn't necessarily um, specific to any one type of person, it's just there to demonstrate um, time. And then we've got load which is going up here. So we talked about low load. So this is the load here and this is the applied load to the back. So the, the load that's on the spine when we sit. Now obviously I mentioned this is a low load before. And this is the point of failure here. So what's happening to the spine is, this is the health of the spine, let's just say. Now obviously over time, when the spine is in that rounded position, the health is reducing, but the load is staying the same, it's staying low, and then over time, the back will eventually start to hurt. And that is the point at which it will start to hurt. Now for each person, this time will be different. So for someone, it could be 30 minutes, it could be five minutes, it could be uh, 120 minutes, two hours, whatever it is. So for each individual, they will have their own health of the spine, they will have their own time frame in which their spine or their back then starts to fail and it starts to hurt. They will also have their own um, sort of l low load applied to that based on the posture, uh, the duration, so on and so forth. So this is essentially what's happening. So what we need to do is when we are sitting, we need to, let's just say we sit down, we need to say get to this point here as the health of the spine starts to deteriorate, we need to possibly get up move around 
and then that will bring our health back up to here and then we will go back on that sort of cycle again get up here let the health come back then it will deteriorate so on and so forth so we're not getting to this point of failure so that in essence is what we are talking about when it comes to how we can then go about reducing the pain so this laxity remains for a prolonged period of time so we have to take a long-term approach to it what we can do is let's just say our back starts to hurt after 60 minutes so if we sort of get up after let's just say that is 30 minutes so if we get up after 30 minutes then that's going to keep our spine healthier and then in two weeks four weeks six weeks eight weeks if we were to sit down for an hour we might find that it doesn't become painful so we've built that resilience and we've delayed the time in which the the health of our, of our spine is diminishing so that's something that we need to take into consideration so how do we do that well as i've mentioned we need to minimize sitting or bending so we need to possibly do it in little intervals so do it in blocks of sitting so we don't minimize the health of the spine or reduce the health of the spine and create that failure of the spine so that's number one number two is we can obviously improve the posture this is something that's talked about a lot when it comes to sitting posture and helping lower back pain is the posture that we use but as i mentioned in other tutorials and in any workshop that i do based on this topic even being in the upright posture is going to have a load on the spine so this is still going to be happening the health of your spine will still start to diminish even if it's in the best posture possible because sitting as a whole isn't the greatest for the spine so what we need to be able to do is use a better posture but we also need to combine that with moving around so we could be changing posture in the seat it could be changing posture as we are bent over and moving around it could be getting up every uh, 30 minutes walking around the office or walking around the house or walking around wherever we are to then sort of build up the health of the spine so we can then sit down again and what we've also got is progressive overload now this is where exercise would come into uh, the equation because at the moment i've just talked about the activity of sitting and ways of trying to delay the lower back pain what we can now start to do is start building some health around and stability around the spine so we can then delay it that much further so too much load and the weak tissues will fail so if we go about doing exercises like planks side planks bird dogs or bridges if we put too much load on the spine on weak tissues then these tissues will eventually fail if we put too little load they won't then regain the strength so we've got these tissues that are starting to creep that are starting to become more lax we have to take a longer term approach to it and we have to do it in a logical uh, way so it can't just be we're going to do and hold planks for as long as we can hold them it's there's going to be some uh, degree of um, ease to it so we can then start building the uh, building the strength around the torso so what we've got to do is get the right load coupled coupled with the right recovery so this is the type of example so we've got the load here so we've got a low load so the spine is starting to diminish so we then get up we move around that allows that recovery period allows the health to come back up and then it drops off we get back up here walk around health come back up and then so on and so forth and this is the type of example that we need to take into a gym environment or a formal exercise environment whether you do it at the gym or whether you do it at home as well so what we can start thinking about is exactly the same with exercise is we don't want to take the health of our spine or the health of our tissues all the way down to failure because that's going to do exactly the same that's going to cause a problem in our back so what we might do if our back fails at a 30 second plank for example which we'll say is there 
What we might want to do is stop at 10 seconds, give ourselves 5, 10 or even 15 seconds of a break, let it come back up, do another 10 second plank. Give ourselves 5, 10 or 15 seconds, let it come back up and then do another 10 second plank. So we've done 30 seconds of a plank, but we've given ourselves that little bit of recovery. So we would do it at the at the activity level of sitting and bending is we need to add in this right load and right recovery. We need to do it at the exercise level, so individual exercise level of we don't want to take our muscles to complete failure. We want to give them some challenge, let them recover. Give them some challenge, let them recover. Give them some challenge, let them recover. And we also need to do this at the workout level as well. So it's not necessary to do it every single day. It might be do it every other day. It might be do it every second day. But what we're doing at the workout level is we are challenging our the muscles of our torso, allowing them to recover, challenging them, allowing to, them to recover. So then in a month time, six weeks time, two months time, the health of our spine stays up here for a longer duration and we stay further away from the failure part where we get the lower back pain. So hopefully this has given you a better understanding of not only why your back is becoming painful whilst you sit, but what's happening and also how you can start to go about um, reducing that lower back pain and putting some steps in place to, um, to overcome it. So thank you for watching. My name is Chris from Christopher Hall Training. I will speak to you in the next tutorial.